Hello internet users and welcome back to another video. Over the years, I've taken a look at plenty of game ending situations that can be done in the Pokemon games. Many of these are so incredibly obnoxious to deal with that they'll pretty much force any player to just start a new game instead of bothering to continue. Ordinarily, when I do these videos, the scenarios I show often still let the player move around a little, and sometimes even still battle. But for a while now, I've been wondering if I could create a situation that's even more deviously cruel than that. What if there was a save file so ruined that you could barely even do anything upon hitting continue on the main menu? It took me a bit of time to put this together, but for this video, I want to show all of you one of the worst battles that can be made possible in the Generation 1 games. Getting right into it, let's start by explaining an important little exploit that will be relevant in this video. If you are even a little bit familiar with the Generation 1 glitches, then you're likely aware about the ones that can be done using long-range trainers. There are a handful of trainers in the game who have the eyesight to see you as soon as their sprites load into the edge of the screen. Although it doesn't seem like much, that slight delay between them loading in and spotting you gives you just enough time to open the start menu if you're quick enough. From there, it's possible to use a field move, such as fly or teleport, to leave the area as the trainer spots you. This puts the game in a confused state, and by using this, many Pokemon fans have discovered ways to manipulate the game into loading a specific Pokemon battle. Because this is one of the only realistic ways of obtaining the Pokemon Mew, this is often referred to as the Mew Glitch. There are plenty of videos out there that can further explain this glitch in depth, but I only bring this up because the first part of it is what we'll be using for this video. While warping away from long-range trainers has some glitchy effects, the only thing that matters to us right now is the fact that we can open the menu on a tile where a trainer can spot us. Have you ever stopped to wonder what would happen if you were to save the game during this exact moment? As expected, when the save finishes, the menu closes and the trainer will spot you, initiating a battle like normal. If you were to reset the game now, the next time you hit continue on the title screen, the same thing will occur. There is no opportunity to open the menu or move away. The instant you load in, you'll be locked by the trainer's gaze and then be forced to battle them. At first you might think that this isn't a big deal. Who cares? It's just a trainer battle. You win, the game continues as normal, or if you lose, you get sent back to the last visited center. Under most circumstances, you would be right, but with what I've got planned, this battle is going to become a lot more than just a few minutes of inconvenience. So with those explanations out of the way, let me show you all how to use one of these trainers to set up one of the most evil save files I've ever come up with. The first thing you'll need is a Gen 1 game that has a level 100 Gengar and a specific long-range trainer who can still be battled. The one I'll be using for this video is this youngster in the middle of Route 11. You'll understand why in a bit. Next, we'll need to make the Gengar frozen. There aren't many trainers in the game that can inflict this status on the player, but there is a way to do this against Wild Ditto. First, have the Ditto transform into a Pokemon that knows Ice Beam, and from there, switch in the Gengar and wait for Ice Beam to eventually freeze. This might take a little bit, but it can be done. Next, use a healing item on the Gengar and restore its HP to full, without removing the Frozen status. Now that we have our main Pokemon, we next need to visit the PC and deposit all of our items and all other Pokemon. Ordinarily, this is the part of the video where I'd be throwing away and releasing everything, but that step isn't even necessary this time. With all of that taken care of, we're now going to head over to Route 11 with the Frozen Gengar. Next, we're going to get into position and carefully open the start menu as we approach the Long Range Trainer. When we get this, we're now going to save the game here while standing in the youngster's line of sight. And now that we've done that, the lock is complete and this save file has just become borderline unplayable. Let's go over the situation and really explore why that is. From now on, whenever this game is booted up, we will always start with the youngster noticing us and then forcing us to battle. When this battle starts, he will send out a level 18 Nidoran, and of course, our frozen ghost will be sent out too. After going through the setup, it's now impossible to do anything except selecting the fight command. There are no items in our inventory, nothing to do in the party screen, and as we all should know, there is no running from a trainer battle. Every time we try to fight, we will always be told that Gengar is frozen solid and then our turn will pass. This will happen 100% of the time, and there is no way to cure this status in this battle. 
If you're more familiar with later Pokemon games, then you might be used to seeing Pokemon occasionally thawing out and losing the condition naturally. But here in Gen 1, the Frozen status is infamously broken, with only three possible ways to remove it in the middle of a battle. The first is to use a healing item, such as an Ice Heal or Full Restore. But as we've gone over, there are no items to use here. The second method is that the frozen Pokemon must be hit by a Fire-type move that is capable of inflicting the Burn status. In Gen 1, this applies to all Fire-type moves except Fire Spin. The third method is for the opposing Pokemon to use Haze. It should go without saying that this Nidoran cannot use Haze or any Fire-type moves. So as a result, it is not possible for the player to do anything in this battle except constantly pass their turn through the Fight Command. Now that we understand why our Pokemon can't battle, the next question to naturally ask is, what can the youngster's Pokemon do? The Nidoran knows four moves, Tackle, Double Kick, Horn Attack, and Poison Sting. The Youngster Trainer class does not seem to have any special AI applied to it, so it won't take the opponent's type into account when choosing a move. It will also never attempt to switch to any of its other Pokémon either, so under these circumstances it's a guarantee that every turn, one of its moves will be chosen at random, giving each attack a 1 in 4 chance of happening. Three of these four moves do not affect Ghost Pokémon, so they will never be able to hit Gengar if selected. And keep in mind, in Gen 1, enemy trainers don't use PP like the player does. All of their moves have infinite uses. You cannot simply wait out the uses of its attacks until there are fewer options. The Youngster will always have all four of them to freely select from. If you've been following along, then you've probably already arrived at a conclusion here. The only way to escape this battle is to wait until Gengar faints, which can only be accomplished by the youngster repeatedly hitting it with Poison Sting, which only has a 25% chance of happening each turn. That would make sense, right? However, that is only half correct. While we definitely need to lose this battle, the chances of getting hit by the opponent each turn isn't 25%. It's actually much, much lower. Although it may not be immediately obvious from the footage, there is an incredible oversight in Gen 1's battle mechanics that is actively working against us right now. If you've ever played Pokemon before, then something you've probably noticed is that if an attack lands, it will always do at least one point of damage, regardless of the difference in stats. But in the Generation 1 games, in some situations, it's actually possible for an attack to deal zero damage. Most of you watching have probably never noticed this though. This is because when the game calculates an attack doing no damage, it'll display the text saying that it missed instead. From what I understand, this is only possible when the Pokémon being attacked has much higher stats than the attacker, and has two types that resist the move in question. Obviously, Gengar being a level 100 Ghost Poison type makes Poison Sting an incredibly ineffective move here. However, despite this, you've probably realized by now that it is still possible for it to deal one damage in this battle. After all, you can clearly see the HP bar depleting. The majority of the time, the game will calculate the damage as zero, but there is a tiny chance that a critical hit can occur, and that rare instance is the only way for the calculation to be just high enough to deal that single point. In order to show just how rare this occurrence is, I did a little experiment. I loaded up the game and recorded what happened during 200 turns. During those turns, Poison Sting was used 47 times, and out of those 47 attacks, only 3 of them hit. You also have to remember, the 1 in 256 glitch is still a thing, so there's always a small possibility that the critical Poison Sting could just miss anyway. After 200 turns, the game state has just barely advanced, with Gengar's HP only being slightly lowered. If it takes that long to reach this point, then just how long would it take for the entire battle to finish? Clearly, a lot of this is left up to chance, but let me give an example of how this could go. Let's say for the sake of argument that you were guaranteed to get hit every two minutes. Of course, this is assuming that you're playing on the fastest option setting and are mashing the A button without ever taking a break. With 242 max HP, it would take 484 minutes for the battle to end. That's 8 hours and 4 minutes. And that's only if you're lucky. In a real attempt, you're not going to be getting hit that frequently that fast, especially over such a long period of time. Eight hours for a single battle is a pretty big deal when you think about it. Speedrunners could go through the whole game start to finish multiple times. A lot of people could even do a casual playthrough if they wanted, and still have time to spare. It takes so long, what would even be the point? You might as well just start a new game. 
But with that in mind, what if I told you that we could make this even worse? Up until now, we've only been using one Gengar, but what if we were to add more? Let's say that beforehand, I cloned this Gengar and had an entire party of frozen ghosts. Having more of them for this battle still wouldn't let you do much. You could go into the party menu and switch them out each turn, but this would just be slower than mashing the fight command for the same result. With six Gengar instead of one, the time it would take to escape the battle now multiplies by six. Once again, using the generous scenario of getting hit every two minutes, the total time would go from eight hours and four minutes to 48 hours and 24 minutes. Remember that this is all over the course of one battle as well, so there is no way to save the game until you're done. This isn't like some of the other soft locks where you only need to check in on the game for a certain amount of time each day. If you want to salvage this save file, it's going to cost you at least two days of your life. And that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say about this. As you can see, escaping this softlock can be done, but the amount of time it would require is just not worth it. I think it's pretty safe to say that I've completed my goal here. Using the game's mechanics in unexpected ways, I've made a battle that lasts longer than a full playthrough. And that right there is a pretty big milestone when it comes to softlock picking. My name is Picaspri, and thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I figured I could just do a little short one here to start the year off. People have told me that I don't plug my other channel enough, so if you want to watch me play games, you can go over to the Picaspri Blue channel, and also watch me stream on Twitch if you'd like. Again, thank you for watching. Have a good night. Bye-bye.